Created by a Christian evangelical radio station 20 years ago to sit in for their host, not to be a guest, to be the guest host on a Christian station, a Jew practicing, not like you, but practicing, observant, believing not in Jesus, not in the New Testament, is allowed to be the guest. I announced this on radio and said KPFK would never even have me as a guest because they are not open. The right-wing Christians are more open than left-wing secularists. And they then KPFK finally invited me on our show because the thought that I had proof that right-wing evangelical Christians were more open-minded than they was too painful. But you have proved that today, and you can tell this to your friends to the left of you. I just remembered. The first, <laughs> my parallel anecdote to that, that uh, a few months ago with, uh, with Rabbi Cooper, I accompanied a group of 11 Presbyterian friends to, to Israel, and uh, we were with them for a week, trying to uh, prime them before the General Assembly, where they were going to take the lead in trying to undo divestment. And most of the week we didn't talk theology. But towards the end of the week, they got comfortable enough that they started asking all the questions. The second you come for a cause, the second you get together, it was all there. And I, I spent a good deal of time with them fielding all of their questions. We had more time than we had here. I will not forget, despite having made a completely different impression of talking just about values or whatever, I spoke about the nitty gritty of halacha and why I thought it was so necessary. We got off the bus, and one fellow says to me, you know, Rabbi, I don't know, every time I speak to you, you seem to have like some good advice and some good insight. I have come to the conclusion that every Presbyterian minister ought to have himself an Orthodox Rabbi. <laughs> I do disagree with you a thousand percent about standing up. Standing up should not be done out of social pressure. It should be done and we don't do it that many days a year. We do it in the young Orion when we focus on the image of HaKadosh Baruch Hu as Melech Malfei Hamlachim, the absolute kingship of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and you do get up for a king. And you would stand up for hours to be in the presence of a good, beneficent king. When you understand it that way and understand that it's not halacha, it is not a, it is not a burden at all. And if it's a burden, you should know halacha that you can sit down. I'm in enough trouble as it is for coming here, so I will get further into trouble by telling you that many of you knew, know who my, my own personal love is, certainly one of the greatest Baalei Halach in town. I delight in remembering a time when he passed him something in public, and somebody came over, running over with a Shulchan Aras, and pointing to a Mogan of Ram. The Mogan of Ram said the opposite. He said, Nachal Mahafni. And he said, Rabbi, you're wrong. And he said, I'm right. He said, you're wrong. Mogan of Ram says it. No, he says, the Mughan of Ram says, I'm right. So what do you mean? He says, Nachal Mahachmir. He says, yes. Nachal Mahachmir means it's appropriate to be Mahachmir, but it's a Chavra. If you don't want to be Mahachmir, then know what the Halacha is. 99% of the questions that we have, difficulties with Halacha, come from not being able to put Halacha in its proper sequence. Knowing the difference between the Yeraisa, the Rabbana, something that's accepted by everything, something that's accepted in Shulchan because a majority, or a close to majority, one of the first things I teach my law students at Loyola Law School is that this is one of the great things about Halacha, that we have a way of taking competing values and putting in a framework and knowing what trumps what. And yes, there are things, including the quality of one's own davening, that will trump standing in the Eva. But if, if you don't know it, it's not the fault of Torah. Get to, as Shakespeare once said, get thee to a base medrash. <laughs>